This is Morning Prayers at St. Peter's, Ipswich, brought to you online, a place where we study God's Word together and where we join our hearts and our voices before the throne of God, praying for the needs of our world, our church and ourselves. Welcome this morning. Good morning and welcome to morning prayer from St Peter's Church, Ipsley. My name is Linda Nicholas and I'm part of the ministry team at St Peter's. And thank you for joining me this morning. It's always lovely to meet in the name of Jesus and share worship together. And uh, we will be carrying on using the lectionary readings today with a psalm followed by a reading from the book of Joshua. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O oh God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The first reading this morning is Psalm 117. It's a very short reading and it's the shortest psalm in the Bible, 117. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And I was thinking, as we're sitting here meditating on this June day, we are reminded that sometimes we do not need a lot of words to praise God for who he is. Sometimes our praise can come from just sitting, being still and looking at all that he has created. I know I've been looking into my little pond in the garden this week and found some amazing water lilies and they always amaze me every year. They're just so beautiful and these wonders of creation. And we just look at all that he has created, including our own lives, and realising with thankfulness how great his love is towards all people. A love based in his complete faithfulness towards all people. An incomprehensible love. We who are so undeserving, but yet a love he freely gives to all of us, no matter what we have done or will do. Wow, just what an amazing truth is that. And this amazing truth urges us to praise the most gracious and merciful Lord for his enduring love that he has given us 
for all eternity. We thank God most sincerely for loving us as undeserving as we are and for reminding us that nothing will be able to separate us from his enduring, faithful love through Jesus. And now our hearts may always find peace, comfort and rest in this undeniable truth. And we can rest in his loving arms every day. And may we always have an attitude of praise in our lives for all to see his great love reflected through us. Isn't it so amazing that the truth of the psalmist's words written thousands of years ago in this beautiful little Alleluia hymn is still the same truth today and will be for all eternity. Our lives have been, has been forever changed because of our Lord's great love and faithfulness. The second reading this morning is Joshua 24. 128 and we come to to the last chapter in the book of Joshua so Joshua 24 1 to 28 then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders the heads the judges and the officers of Israel and they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Cana and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of Seir to possess. But Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I met Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst. And afterwards I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, you came to the sea and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with chariots and horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians and made the sea come over them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness for a long time. Then. I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you, and you took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam, son of Beor, to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore, he blessed you, so I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you. And also the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Gershashites, the Hivites and the Jebusites. And Allah handed them over to you. I sent the hornet ahead of you which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you a land on which you had not laboured and towns that you had not built, and you live in them. You eat the fruit of vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant. Now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity, sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served before the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. 
Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day. Whom will you serve? Whether the gods your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are serving, in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. And who did those great signs in our sight? He protected us along all the way that we went and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God, and he will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the Lord said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, we are witnesses. He said, then put away the foreign gods that are among you and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, the Lord our God, we will serve and him we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a large stone and set it there under the oak in the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, see, this stone shall be a witness against us. For it has heard all the words of the Lord that he spoke to us. Therefore, it has been a witness against you if you deal falsely with your God. So Joshua sent the people away to their inheritances. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, this is Joshua's last speech to the Israelites. God had chosen Joshua to lead the Israelites. Joshua had been a good leader, but his time was near to an end. Joshua spoke to the Israelites in the hope that he could point them in the right direction. He could not help them forever, but he could at least set them on the right course before he died. He started by recounting all that God had done for them. Joshua concluded his speech by saying, choose this day, whom will you serve? But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. That sets a clear direction, doesn't it? When we start by deciding to serve the Lord, that decision affects every other decision we make, whether it be our lives, decisions, marriage decisions, how we raise our children. And this is what Joshua, Joshua was calling the Israelites to do, serve the Lord. Times were good. They had entered the promised land. They were settling into their new homes. It was an exciting time, and it was in these good times that Joshua caused them to choose God. Nobody had to tell them to remember God when times were hard. In a foxhole, in times of trouble, everyone prays. But now they had won the battle. Now Joshua was calling them to remember the one who had given them the victory. 
we need to make good choices when times are good because those choices will help us survive bad times. Choosing God in every decision will help us to avoid a thousand self-inflicted wounds and 10,000 heartaches. How much easier would past times have been if we'd included God in every decision? How much easier would it have been for us, for our families? How many disasters and heartaches would we have avoided? And choosing God today helps us to survive hard times when they come. Hard times are part of our lives. Good people get hurt. Good people get sick. Good people die. How will we handle it when hard times hit us? If we, in times of trouble, have walked with him, we will be strong for the rough, rough times ahead. Julian of Norwich was a great Christian of another century. She spoke of life's hard times. She said, God did not say, thou shalt not be tempested. Thou shalt not be travailed. Thou shalt not be afflicted. He did say, thou shalt not be over." come who will who will we choose to serve let's choose to serve the lord today and we come to a time of prayer lord we are pulled in many directions many duties and tasks seek to lay claim on our lives. This day, at this time, let service to God be our choice. This day, we open our arts and spirits to God. Blessed be the God of creation, who has called us to join together this morning. Praise be to God, who sustains and nurtures our lives. And today in the church's calendar, we remember the birth of John the Baptist and the collect for today. Let's pray. Almighty God, by whose providence your servant John the Baptist was wonderfully born and sent to prepare the way of your son, our saviour, by the preaching of repentance, lead us to repent according to his preaching, and after his example, constantly to speak the truth boldly, to rebuke vice, and patiently to suffer for the truth's sake. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we pray for the church. And today in the diocesan diary, we pray for the parishes of St. John the Baptist with St. Saviour's Hagley and St. Leonard's Clent. As they begin worshipping together as a newly formed benefice, we pray for worship and mission and their work with children and families, for their ALM, for their clergy, Richard Newton, and Tim Kim Topham, for their reader, Alison Lewis. We pray for our church, the Church of St. Peter at Ipsley, and for those preparing for services this week, for the leader, speaker, those who read and pray, and the musicians, for the technology to work. Maybe, maybe worship you, Lord, and praise you, for your steadfastness and faithfulness and love. We pray too for Jackson, his parents, godparents, his family and friends, as Jackson will be baptised on Sunday. May we all know your presence, Lord, 
as Jackson becomes the newest member of the church. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for the people of the world. Almighty God, you are the only source of health and healing. In you, there is calm and the only true peace in the universe. Grant to each one of us, your children, an awareness of your presence and give us perfect confidence in you. We pray for all who suffer at the hands of others throughout the world, through injustice, intolerance, discrimination, war, greed and corruption. Lord, we pray that you may raise peacemakers, that there may be negotiations between nations and through your love, we may show love and respect to each other. Lord, we pray that you will fill the word world with your glory and may that glory be seen by the radiance of your light to the nations. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank you and pray for all who seek to bring health and healing to the sick, for all who serve our communities as doctors, health visitors, district nurses, for all involved in community health projects in all parts of the world. And we do pray for those who are ill in body, mind or spirit, those for whom we pray in the weekly catch those who are bereaved, those known personally to us who need your help, those with no one to pray for them. To your keeping, Lord, we commend all who suffer. May your love sustain them. May your presence comfort them. May they in you find hope and courage, rest and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray together the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless us. May the Lord preserve us from all evil and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, thank you for joining me with this week. And I do apologise for moves around room to room. Um, and I'm aware that my dishwasher um, was actually running one day this week that you could hear on the prayer. So I do apologise, we were doing some work, but everything seems to be back to normal now. Uh, so thank you so much for sticking with me this week. Uh, morning prayers continue next week at 10 o'clock weekdays. And this Holy Communion is at 10.30 on Sunday. So I hope to catch up with some of you then. Bye for now.